Welcome to Digital Asset News, they get top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty amazing stuff. First up, Google moves into Venmo and bank territory with checking accounts and updated payment app. Why is this such a big deal? Because it's something that we talked about just two days ago where Facebook and Google soon to enable Bitcoin buying also. I've got my man Alex Mashinsky from Celsius come on the show today around 2.30 p.m. Central Time and here's the questions that I have. So we're gonna talk about these first and you can take a vote and also let me know some questions you have for the machine. In some good Chainlink news, Matic becomes the first outside Ethereum to launch native Chainlink feeds. And this is just more good news on top of more good news because Chainlink could be a top three crypto. And finally, we're gonna play devil's advocate. There was a tweet I sent out, which was a quote from Ian Bellina from Token Metrics, where he believes that Bitcoin could go down to 14,000 in December. We'll take a look at that and a lot of other things, but first let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So it's November 19th, 9 a.m. Texas time. Trying to get some things done for uh, this channel and my other businesses, so let's get into it. So first up, hey, Bitcoin's above uh, 18K. Again, that's pretty good news. It's up almost 1%, but again, 15% for the week. I think uh, that's been talked to death, so let's just keep going. Ethereum, 478. Gosh, I wish it could just hit that $500 mark. I think that's like a psychological barrier and a line of support. So if we can just hit 500, I think we're off to the races. And uh, we'll see how that all works as far as the Ethereum 2.0 launch. If you haven't heard, uh, they're trying to get as much Ethereum uh, staked as possible. Right now, they're around 20, 25% of what they need. So it looks like that Ethereum 2.0 uh, phase zero phase yeah, it could be delayed until January 1st or 15th, but we'll see. Uh, XRP, hey, it's almost at 30 cents, uh, 29.9. So it's up 3% or 16% for the seven day average. So if you're holding on to XRP and you bought it at uh, a quarter, well, congratulations, looking good. Chainlink, uh, number five spot, almost at $14. This is looking pretty good for Chainlink, I gotta be honest. So I think it's all time high was around 18. Right now we're almost at 14, so uh, pretty good uh, week for a chain link of 7%. But really the big story is Litecoin. Litecoin is on a tear. There is nothing new about it that I know of. Let me know in the comments section. But uh, again, it's at 35%, up 12% for the week. I do believe it has something to do with people who are in PayPal and take a look at it and go, wow, I don't know uh, what uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash really is. And Ethereum, I guess, but they're pretty expensive. But this Litecoin is only 80 bucks. I want to buy that. I think that's part of it. There's probably something else I don't know because I don't know everything. So let me know. Uh, Bitcoin Cash up 1.5. And if you get a chance after this, we did a, uh, a Bitcoin.com exchange uh, quick live stream. Actually, it was a video premiere. It was me, Alex Maschioli, and uh, Danish, uh, head of uh, the Bitcoin.com exchange. And it was really good, really fun times. We got to talk about the Bitcoin bull run, why we think it's sustainable, but also we got a real peek behind the curtain uh, because Danish is in charge of uh, the whole exchange right there. So he's telling us a lot of great information and it was, uh, it was a fun time. So when you get a chance, uh, check that out. I'll link it at the very end. And in there, I actually talk about why I really should invest into some Bitcoin cash. So let's see, Polkadot, man, Polkadot's almost at $5. I'd like to see that. Six and a half for the week, pretty good. Finance coins up, card on, I mean, everybody's up. Cardano seems like, this is a question somebody sent me, like, why is the card, Cardano doesn't do too much while, while everything else is pumping? We have to remember right now that uh, Bitcoin always pumps first. It seems like that's pretty much how it is in, in, a, in a bull run. But then it starts to kind of float down to the altcoins as people start to go, hmm, I like Bitcoin, but what else is behind it? What's the next Bitcoin? So uh, as far as Cardano, really not much of a thing. It's always around 10 cents, always. So um, hopefully it can uh, find its legs. EOS 3.1, 2.7, anything great? Wow, 12% for OKB. I think there was a, a new listing for OKB. That's why, so great for that, I guess. Uh, Huobi token, 12%, sure. You're in finance again, uh, playing the game, 22%, 65% for the week. I will not touch that. 5% for uni, that's pretty good. 10% for synthetics and on and on we go. So it uh, looks like the market's doing pretty good. Again, I believe Pigcoin will pump first and then it'll flow down to the altcoins, but only time will tell. All right, let's break in the top story. So first up, this is fascinating and it has huge ramifications. So Google moves into Venmo and bank territory with checking accounts with their updated payment app. And this was a story that we had just covered just like three or four days ago, where it was Facebook and Google soon to enable Bitcoin buying. It always surprises me when we have these stories early where people are like, eh, it's just a rumor. And then we see other types of information that gets put out where it's like, oh yeah, it actually could be. So uh, I'll try to link this in the end as well, uh, where we talk about our Facebook and Google gearing up 
to offer Bitcoin and crypto, but I'm going to tell you why it's almost a lock why they're going to do this. And I'll explain that in a little bit. So the tech giant is relaunching the payment app to allow people to pay friends, similar to PayPal's popular Venmo and Square's cash app. So look, PayPal's already in the game and PayPal owns Venmo. So if PayPal and Venmo are in the game and then Square is already in the game as far as like cryptocurrency, uh, why wouldn't uh, Google and perhaps even Facebook get into it? It only makes sense, right? So first of all, to back up, when it talks here about there's a partnership with Citibank, we just covered a story just a couple days ago where Citibank exec says Bitcoin will trade at 318,000 by M2021. So you know that the people that they're partnering with already have a huge belief into Bitcoin and crypto assets. So why wouldn't they do it? On top of that, when we talk about Square, look, Square made a ton of money off of offering Bitcoin to their users. And it actually drove half, half of Square's cash app revenue in the first quarter. Let me say that again. It drove half of the revenue in the fourth quarter. This was written on February 26, 2020. So when PayPal was going to get in the game, I was like, why wouldn't they do it? Why wouldn't they be a part of that? Because if they can just add Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And look, they went above and beyond Square. They said, look, we're not going to do Bitcoin. We're going to do Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin. So beat that, suckers. So when you take a look at what's going on, it really comes down to why wouldn't they do it? All right, off my soapbox. So here we go. The tech giant will let users open bank accounts, pay friends, and manage budgets through a new version of its Google Pay app rolling out Wednesday. See, the, now this is in contrast with what it talks about here. So it says, rolling out Wednesday, unless there's an update, I do not think they're going to start to do bank accounts uh, just by this week, because today's Thursday, so I don't know where this is actually coming from. And this article is, well, it was yesterday, Wednesday, November 18th. So I don't think that actually happens because right here it says beginning next year. So I don't understand. Let's just talk about the app itself being updated. So whatever. On top of the uh, uh, Citibank and Stanford Federal Credit Union, uh, Google said it plans to add 11 new partner institutions next year. And this is perfect for banks. Like we talked about, banks have to catch up. They're not innovators. And if they don't catch up, they're going to get blockbustered. They're going to look down the street and be like, wow, what happened to us? We were so huge and everybody came to us. And now we're just lonely on the side of the street and nobody cares about the banks. So unless they actually innovate and do something, they're going to uh, fall the way the, the wayside. It's going to be like a typewriter. Who uses a typewriter these days? Anyhow, Google Pay will also let users send peer-to-peer -peer payments, a feature that made PayPal's Venmo and Square's cash up household names as people shift to digital payments. And without even saying it, they're saying it. So moving down, Google said it's Plex checking and savings accounts have, check this out, no monthly fees, no overdraft charges or minimum balance requirements. That sounds pretty good. Users can also request a physical debit card, which will run on MasterCard's network, which I thought was pretty interesting because a lot of things run on Visa and they're like, no, nah, we're going to use MasterCard's network, which is fine. The transactions per second, probably around a, a thousand or more, just like Visa. So I can see that happening, but I'm not a big traditional market guy. But if I was if I was one of those people, I would probably want to invest in MasterCard today because it looks like it's probably going to go up. Not financial advice, just uh, what I'm what I see. But of course, as excited as I am, there are some downsides, and I'm sure you can guess what those are. And it's privacy. Look, uh, Google knows a lot about you already. Uh, when I did and used AdWords, I still use AdWords for my other businesses, but uh, Google. AdWords. I'd also uh, advertise on Facebook ads, Instagram ads, Twitter ads, not so much, but uh, Facebook and Google, they know everything about you. Like I can advertise to a 45 year old mother of three with an income of 35,000 at 55,000 who lives in a rural side of Ohio. And I can pinpoint that subset of group. It can be that granular. And that's just the basics. Now, what if they, I don't know, uh, got that information and started to sell it to advertisers because that's their main business model and say, hey, how would you like to talk to somebody who uh, likes to buy X, Y, and Z? Maybe you could put an ad on there or maybe you could track them uh, through the internet. That's, I'm saying it's easily done. And they're going to talk about in a little bit about how we're not going to sell your data. <laughs> sure, just like Facebook never sold your data. Anyhow, users can link Google Photos to search receipts and link Gmail to see bills and subscriptions for money management. It shows spending summaries and trends over time. Users also get rewards and offers based on their transaction information. Interesting, interesting. So to finish this up, Google said it will use certain data on the payments product, which it said is required by most 
mobile payment providers. For example, Google uses personal information to set up and maintain Google Pay account. Certain information is also required by regulators to protect against fraud and money laundering. Sure. And Google Pay will never, ever sell your data to third parties or share your transaction history with the rest of Google for targeting ads. Of course they won't. Of course they won't. Well, we're not going to sell it per se, but we're going to package it in a certain way that just gives us these advertisers for groups. So it's not like your personal data. It's a subset of data, which we just link together and they can advertise to. So don't be fooled, folks. So anyhow, there's two sides of this story, right? The first side is if this does happen, which I think it's going to happen, uh, 2021 is the year. I've said it all the time. I'll say it again. 2021 is the year. And when Google comes out and says, you know what? Hey, guess what? Uh, instead of just PayPal's paltry for crypto, we're going to offer the top 10. And uh, off you go. So the real question is, which ones are, are, are it's going to be? We know it's going to be Bitcoin, Ethereum, probably Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin. So that's a pretty good bet. On top of that, I don't know what it could be. I think it's going to happen, but I could be wrong. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on.